So we know that artificial light can affect us humans. We've got those filters you can have on your phone with yes. the orange light. And I've seen people wearing glasses to sort of offset blue light because that can affect our sleep cycles. But now the theory is it can also affect other living things like seaweed. Yes, and it's not only a theory. So there is evidence that now like um, a lot of the artificial light, especially like LEDs, and although they are extremely energy efficient, they emit more of that blue light that it affects not only us, but lots of the animals. And this blue light actually reaches deeper into the sea. Um, so it actually can have more impact. So we are seeing now a lot of impacts on, on on um, artificial light at night, for example, Nemo doesn't reproduce um, if, if exposed to artificial light at night. And now for the first time, we are looking at how our underwater forests deal with it. And where is this artificial light coming from? Is this light pollution from big cityscapes or is it also, um, you know, street lights or floodlights at beaches? What kind of light? It's actually everything. So we, we have what we call like sky glow, which is like the, the glow from all the urbanization and big cities that prevent us from looking at the stars, for example, seeing the stars at night. That also has an effect on organisms, but the direct lighting. So everything that people like, like the light promenades on the coastlines, that actually has a massive impact on the organisms, um, on the animals and plants on the water. And how are you carrying out your research? Yes, yeah, so right now, like um, uh, uh, Millie Kelly, which actually works with me, she led a project um, looking at, we did a, a project in the laboratory, looking at the effect of artificial light at night and warming due to climate change on our underwater forest. So like a seaweed called the Clonia hadiata, which is the main habitat former in the whole of like a southeastern Australia, which forms what we call the uh, Great Southern Reef. And you have some preliminary results, but not the full results yet, is that right? Yes, yes. So what we have seen, it actually like artificial light at night, as expected, because it provides light for the seaweeds, can actually enhance their growth uh, and, and primary productivity. But importantly, when occurs with other stressors like warming and climate change, which are expected to do, um, it actually has a massive impact on their survival and growth. So we are seeing uh, not that good results. We're seeing very negative impacts on, on the seaweed. And this is something that's having really broad implications, right? Because we have now 20%, was it, of coastlines affected? Yeah, by so more than 20% of the world's uh, coastlines are now affected. And we have seen that uh, biologically important levels of light pollution can reach up to like more than 10 meters uh, in, the, in the ocean, in the seafloor. So it really has really big impacts, especially considering that uh, this seaweed that we are studying, it underpins a lot of biodiversity here in Australia. And so what's the solution to this? Is it just literally turning off the lights near the ocean? Yes, that would be ideal, uh, but there are other ways we can do, like we can be smart about that. So we can use filters, for example, or use more warm lights rather than the uh, LED, like the blue bright um, white lights that transmit like the blue light that it's the most um, deleterious for us. Um, we can use like shields, for example, or have sensors when the light is only on, when there is activity and avoid the waste of energy anyway. Like how many times we go to the CBD and there are a lot of these buildings, empty buildings with all the lights on. So all of these can contribute to stop this problem.